Well, he moves down, and this is a tremendous movement. Notice this, verse 2. And behold, there came a leper. That's one of the worst cases, incurable in that day. There came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now, this leper, when he came to the Lord Jesus, he didn't come and say to him, Will you make me clean? Or are you able to make me clean? He came with faith. The Lord Jesus now has come from the heights. He goes down to the depths. He's confronted by a leper. And the leper puts it on this basis here. He said, Lord, and he recognizes his lordship. And he says to him, if you will, if you will, you can make me clean. It's not always his will, friend. But if it's his will, he can do it. And the will of God must come first. Oh, that's so important, and it's so difficult for me. Now, maybe it's easy for you, but I find it difficult to put the will of God first. I put it like this, Lord, will you do this because I want you to do this? That is the basis. This leper says, you will. You can. I know you can. But will you? Is it according to your will? That's a little different than we hear it today, is it not? When we hear some people saying that you can demand of the Lord to do certain things and that he will do these things. May I say to you, let him decide it. And that's the only way it's going to be done anyway. Now, notice verse 3. For this is a very wonderful thing. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Now, if I had touched a leper, what would have happened? I'd have got leprosy. <laughs> it wouldn't have healed him. But our Lord touched him, saying, listen to him. He responded to that. I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now, there's something here that I don't want you to miss because it's so important. It says that he touched him. Have you ever stopped to think that this man not only had the physical disease of leprosy, but he had a psychological hang-up that was terrible? I do not know his background, but I imagine that one day he noticed that there was a breaking out in his hand. He'd been out plowing. He came in and showed it to his wife, and his wife said she'd put some ointment on it, maybe some figs that night. Next morning, it was just as red as it could be, and he went out and plowed again. That went on for about a week, and his wife became a little uneasy. She said, you go to the priest. He went to the priest, and he put him up for the 14 days. After 14 days, it had spread. The priest said to him, you have leprosy. He said, well, let me go tell my wife and children goodbye. And he said, I'm sorry, you can't tell him goodbye. You can't put your arm around your wife again. You'll never be able to hold those little ones in your arm again. And when you come near anyone, you must cry out, unclean. And so he saw his children begin to grow up. They would come and leave food at a certain place, and he'd come and get it after they withdrew. He could only see them at a distance. He had been able to touch no one, and no one had been able to touch him. And one day he comes to Jesus and he said, Will you? You can. If you will, you can make me clean. And what did the Lord Jesus do? He touched him. He touched him. My friend, may I say to you that touch was one of the most wonderful things that ever happened to the man. Not only cleansed his leprosy, but it brought him back into the family of mankind and the family of God. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Now in Mark you find out this man so overjoyed, you can't blame him. He went and just told everybody about it. 
may I say to you that here's one man who disobeyed Jesus. I'm rather on his side because he did tell everyone. It caused the Lord Jesus to withdraw from Capernaum. Now we're told, verse 5, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. I'm sure the centurion had heard about this. He was a Gentile, a Roman on the outside. He built a synagogue there, we find out later. I think Dr. Luke tells us that. And I have been in that old synagogue. I mean, the ruins of it, it's pretty much down today, but the ruins of it is still there. If there's any place where Jesus walked, it would be in that synagogue. But anyway, this centurion came. He'd heard probably about the leper, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Now, this man was in a very terrible condition. And we're told here, Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Listen to this centurion. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. Now, this man is a man in a position who recognized authority, this kind of a power, the kind of power that where he wore a Roman uniform and he could say to a soldier, he'd say, look, do this. He did it. Why? The power, which is authority, the tremendous power. Now he looked at the Lord Jesus and he said, you have that kind of power. He recognized that. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. It is recorded that on two occasions the Lord Jesus Christ marveled. One was at the unbelief of Israel, which we'll see in the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter. And then here he marveled at the faith of 